Okay, let's have a look here. Um, okay. <clears throat> Px donates the population of city at time x. So the I won't write out each time, but the first part we have to interpret fx plus h minus fx over h. And then the second part, the h goes to zero. So it would be the um, average change in um, population from um, x to x plus h per um, unit um, of time. And then B would be the uh, rate of change in population from x, uh, no, not from x, at x. Um, per unit time at x. That's 90. And then the honestly, the only difference in 91, 2, 3, and 4 is going to be the keyword. So this is population per unit time, and this is population per unit. Why did I not write time? Per unit time. And then in the second one, CX denotes the total amount of money spent on concessions by X customers. So that would be the average change in uh, money spent on concessions from X to X plus H per unit customer. So rather than saying uh, per, uh, per per customer. And then the B part is just the rate of change in money spent per customer. Uh, okay. 92 it's just going to be the same thing again except cost per radio and then 93 it's the grade per x hours uh, not per x hours studies per per time which is hours in this question and then lastly, it's the cost uh, per year, so per unit time again. So I think that's that's really it. The, I'm sure the answer at the back is quite similar. Oh, I missed 95. 95 is pressure per uh, per unit of altitude uh, what's the better word not per unit of altitude um, I guess that'll have to do unit height It's not, not the most elegant way to put it. Oh, okay. Three. Um, let's see now. Average rate which customer spends on contessions in thousands per customer. 
and then rate in thousands per customer which x customers spend money on concessions and yeah average average uh, yeah um yeah we should put the units in as well we need to like like for example time is like in 93 is hours etc and 94 it's years and this one here is speed and this one here is uh years etc uh if the cost in 92 is also in thousands the grade is in percentages in 94 again it's in thousands of dollars um yeah yeah okay all right let's see now um, sketch the graph the function y uh, equals fx with all the following properties okay let's have a look at that one now looks like a good one okay um okay see what we got here okay right um <clears throat> let's just mark off there's minus one there's minus two there's minus three one Two, three, okay, and then we'll do the same. One, two, three, minus one, minus two, minus three, okay. It's roughly looking all right. All right, let's begin. So the derivative has to be positive from minus two to one. So it has to be increasing. But the derivative at two is zero. So it has to be flat here. So let's just have it going. Um, let's make it a little higher. Like there. Okay. And then uh, the derivative is positive when x is more than two. So it's okay. continues up like that. Okay. Okay. Um um f2 oh rats f2 is 2 and f0 is 1 f2 is 2 and f0 is 1 okay and then it's coming from minus infinity and it's going to infinity okay and at 1 it doesn't exist all right so i'll just go Okay, uh, so derivative is positive from minus 2 to 1, indeed it is. f dash 2 is 0, indeed it is. The derivative is positive after 2, it is. f2 is 2 and f0 is 1. Going to minus infinity, you're tending to 0. And going to infinity, you're tending to infinity. And the derivative at 1 doesn't exist so maybe what i can do something what could i do what 
could I do? I want to make like a spike or something. Um, hmm, that'd be the easiest way to make the derivative not exist. Have a little, like, uh, have it hard to draw, like, have two different curves meet at a point there. Um, what would be a better way to do that? Yeah, okay. I have an idea. So F two is two and F zero is one and F one we want it to kind of break so to draw. Uh, let me try and draw it here first. I want to make it this one like really steep. Okay and then this one here I put in a different color connects to it but Yeah, okay, so I think we're in order now. F, the slope is positive between minus two and one. It's zero at two. It's positive after two. Um, two is two and zero is one. It goes to minus infinity and plus infinity, and there's no derivative here at one. Yeah, okay. Kind of a weird looking graph, the one I drew, but it meets all the criteria. Okay. Um, I think maybe I'll leave it there. Well, maybe I'll just finish on with ninety seven. So in 97, give a physical interpretation here. So it, T is temperature in Fahrenheit. So it's the um, rate of change in the temperature per in Fahrenheit per unit of distance above the ground, or if you, maybe to be a little bit more clear, per unit rise. In height, which is in uh, feet. So the B part that would mean um, at 1000 feet, the temperature is fallen at 0 0.1 Fahrenheit per foot. Uh, okay, let's have a look at the answer at the back. Make sure we've got something similar there for 97. Um, the rate in degrees per foot, I thought it was Fahrenheit, at which the temperature is increasing or decreasing for a given height. The rate change temperature as altitude changes at 1,000 feet is minus 0 0.1 degrees. Oh, Call it degrees Fahrenheit in the States, isn't that it? I don't like that if that's true. 
I think it is. Oh, degrees Fahrenheit. Blech. Blech. All right. Um, um, yeah. I, I kind of regret writing the word unit in previously um, from looking at this because, um, well, I'm just going to check the answer again for those ones. Average weight, average consumer spend on concessions in thousands per customer. Yeah. Per customer, average grade received on the test with an average study time between two values. Mm, that's not really clear. Average change in atmospheric pressure between two different altitudes. Mm, yeah, so actually, I think I kind of regret a little bit my choice of the word unit in the first few questions. Uh, I think what I would change rather than per unit time. I think I'd rather swap that word out. It's 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 fine for part B, but for part A, I um I would rather say per uh, given length rather than unit. I think that would be a little bit better. So yeah, I feel better with that one. Average change in population from X to X plus H. Uh, I don't even have to say X plus X plus H either, because I've just said for given length. So we can fix this up much better. Average change in population um, for, given, for given length of time. And uh, that would be x to x plus, or no, um, yeah, no, it would be x to x plus h. And I'd be changing the word time here. So let's see if that gels with the other ones. Rate of change in population per unit time at x, so that's still fine, and 91. Uh, average change in money spent per length of customer. So, um, yeah, it sounds weird to say length of customer, doesn't it? Maybe it's better to say instead of customer per number of customers. Um, and this could be per number of radios. But the rest are the same length of length of and uh, rather than per length of time, per length of altitude, per length of altitude. Yeah, I guess that's okay. It's not the best. Yeah, sorry, I should have, I mean, I really should have written them out fully, but um, yeah, I made a bit of a mess of that one. Not my best video. Okay, well, I want to push on onwards and upwards, so we'll leave it for there for today. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm certain this is a problematic video, but anyways, we'll uh we'll continue next time.